talk a little bit about the Who Killed WCW episode two. Ugh. After a somewhat promising episode one, this was really bad. And I'm actually... Good way to put that. Somewhat I, promising. Somewhat promising. I'm surprised that some of the stuff made air because... <laughs> If you are selling this as a documentary and you have this reputation of the dark side of the ring. Now, I'm not saying that the dark side is like this super everything is 100 percent true documentary. There are moments when the wrestlers are a little over the top and it's entertaining, but that's part of like the wink wink of dark side. There was no wink wink on this show. There was just outright lies and outright just like Goldberg saying. Yeah, I didn't know what to do in that match when I screwed up. Just, like, <laughs> he just screwed up. He just screwed a spot up. You know, it's almost like they took that and made like this. Oh yeah, he's not ready. Like right then, no, they 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 were the they were on the horse with Goldberg there, right? Of all of all the things, Fuck. Goldberg is such a proud man. He is this still in his fifties or whatever, just this hard ass guy, like. No one messing mm-hmm. with Goldberg for him I to like go. Goldberg. No, I like him a lot. I but for him to just go. I had no idea what that was supposed to do. I got lost. I was like, dude, you didn't have to say that. I mean, we we That's could okay. see he was it. Green. I mean, he was extremely green, and yeah, but he didn't know. Maybe I should just grab a grab a hold. So this show, to me, I, I don't know if I mentioned it to you or if I mentioned it to Andrew, but Eric Bischoff, when when they were doing the the early like press stuff, he said something to the effect of he was cautiously optimistic about how they were going to tell this story, which to me sent me going like, Oh, this is probably not going to be very truthful if he's cautiously optimistic. Yeah. And so I, now this is fan fiction in my own head. I don't know that this is how it went, but I'm watching this episode and I'm thinking, you know, the producers, Evan and, and Jason, are like, Eric, really want you to do this. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to let you tell about all your flaws. But in the end, you're going to come out like a baby face. <laughs> because at the end of this show, this dude talks about getting sent home. His wife is, is, is on this as well. His wife says yeah. that Eric gets home. He jumps in his his airplane. He flies out to Wyoming, Cody, Wyoming, where I think he lives now. And he just had a great day of fishing, waist deep in the lake or whatever where he was. And so the viewer is seeing this as, and, and at the same time, you have Conan basically saying that Eric is the reason for the NWO, for all these things. You have Nash sticking up for Eric. So it's kind of like the swan song of Eric Bischoff. He had these Mm -hmm. great highs. He had some lows. But we're putting him out and we're celebrating him on his way out. That is not how that shit happened, by the way. There was no celebration on the way out. Uh, I just found that narrative. And look, this is this is a documentary. Uh. And, but in part, and, and this is where you know I give Evan and Jason a little bit of slack in that you also want to make it entertaining. You have these little ways to to set Eric up where he actually does admit faults. He's like, yeah, you know, telegraphing the Mick Foley thing was probably not the best idea. Mm-hmm. The and finger, yeah, the finger, po- mentioned, finger, yeah, yeah, finger poke of doom probably not probably not smart at the end yeah. there. So so he he kind of goes. You're like, oh, at least he showed some, you know, thoughtfulness in 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 making a mistake, and then they send him off to the pat, you know, to to his happy place. So that that narrative of, you know, Eric Bischoff, um, you know, er- Eric Bischoff is kind of like the hero of this story or whatever. I was just like, okay, I'm seeing right through this. This is really bad, but maybe that was how they had to do it in order to get Eric to actually do the dog. He's like, okay, you can't kill me in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you you still got to show me as, as you know, the way that I want to be shown. I, may, maybe not. Maybe I'm just making it up. But that's how it felt for me watching the end of this thing um, yeah. with, with Bischoff. Kind of, you feel sorry for him at the end or whatever. <laughs> I'm glad it might 
whatever happened cut out or someone distracted me or whatever because I just couldn't finish it. Uh, the Bischoff, George Dome, talking about oh, Hogan calling me, wanted to do it, all happy. like not. Exp- and I wish there was a counterpoint, a Dave Meltzer yeah. or someone that would say, yeah, Hogan saw that there are going to be all these executives from Turner <laughs> there. And yeah. He wanted to be let him see him on there, and they think that he was the one that's responsible for that house. And yep. you know, that wasn't on there. Even a small, I know it's a small counterpoint, but to me, it's not. When Nash is talking about Goldberg and beating Goldberg, and you know, everyone knows in wrestling that the chase is where the yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, there's history shows the chase has worked very successfully. But also, I'll tell you, Dash, counterpoint, Bruno San Martino, mm-hmm. Bob Backlund, mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan, mm-hmm. you know, Drew for years as champion. And Goldberg was that guy. The fans did not care, you know, that his matches went a short amount of time. They just wanted to see him crush people. They could have rode that for a while. I was kind of hoping that – I'm sure Kevin Sullivan – if they would have said, that, oh, this is what Nash said, I'm sure he would have responded with that, you know, you know, like, you know, you know, there's an, well, he did, say, he did say it, right. He said, he said, my finish was how Goldberg clean. always wins his matches. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that was his idea. And he said he got overruled. Yeah. 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 It was winning. I remember on a Kevin Sullivan interview in the past, they said, what would you do? He's like, get that belt right back on Goldberg and, <laughs> you know, ride that horse to the wheels fall off, you know? So, like, you know, so he was just, he was just, yeah, that that, that frustrated me. And it, there's no counterpoints to stuff. Like, so, something like that, you kind of, like, throw, it only takes a couple seconds to throw the counterpoint on, you know? And then, I'm trying to think about that. Was, that was, Nash was frustrating the hell out of me in this, yeah, this he was episode. Bad. He was really he bad. Was, I felt like he was like, eh, I just goof off. I say some just most random shit and the rock sounds like he's like just like loving like wcw like oh, I love okay I, 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 i'm, go, I'm glad feel, you bro- <laughs> just, just not feel genuine is is part of this whole deal but i get why he's there big star it's his production company his production you know so yeah i i made the mistake last week by saying i think he's gonna be better in the next episode because they'll talk more wwf they did not he just had that one clip that he said and i don't even think that was honest because he said he mm. was the opening match guy so he would finish his match and he would be back in his hotel room watching nitro this yeah, dude had the intercontinental championship <laughs> almost right away what is yeah, he talking yeah. about well he was hurt for a while so maybe that's when he was watching it, well yeah well the, yeah. that was after the um, well, I mean, yeah, there was that time period when he's when he's yeah. not uh, when he's getting booed all the hell, and they bring him back. <laughs> I know it's just oh, we gotta do two more of these damn things. 